on both sides of the Mexican-U.S. border, ghosts exert an influence upon my family's sense of the past. And as a historian, I know that the most truthful stories make room for phantasms. My great-grandfather, Sebastián Vargas, rode with Pancho Villa. He was Villa's treasurer in the Estado del Norte during the Mexican Revolution. He traveled from Chihuahua to New York to oversee the printing of the Sabanas Villa used to pay his army. Some say that Sebastián didn't always circulate all the money he printed. By 1916, with the U.S. government rankled by Villa's antics and Villa losing battles on the field, in his paranoia, he began to turn against his friends. Sebastián, imprisoned ahead of Villa's dispatch of orders to the firing squad, turned himself into a zombie. The drug he consumed in jail, cocaine, tucked into the gums, didn't kill him, but made him sick enough that the guards permitted his wife and daughter one last visit. The women dressed, dressed Sebastián, now among the living dead, in their own clothing, then walked out with him into a horse-drawn wagon. They raced off from Chihuahua to El Paso in Texas, beyond Villa's jurisdiction. Sebastián had a son, Sergio, who returned to live in Chihuahua. Uncle Sai, as we called him, was one of the few men in Chihuahua in 1950 who had any medical background. Sai lived with his large family in the tree-lined neighborhood on Calle 35 between the cathedral and the hospital. That year, Dolores, a housekeeper known to the family, died during the delivery of twins. Her surviving child, a young girl named Elda, fell ill almost immediately thereafter. Uncle Sai and his large family took Elda into their home, but Elda's health didn't improve as it should have. The family sensed her most debilitating malady was grief and feared she was dying too. That is when the series of odd phenomena began. First came the scratching from under the furnace grate, then the bumps and bangs on an adjacent wall. Days later came the sound of a door closing when everyone present could see that it remained open. Finally, the groans and whimpers began, barely audible at first, but growing more distinct into the voice of a woman in pain, the voice of Dolores. For weeks that summer, the poltergeist's appearances came as regular as clockwork. Noises emerged, for, emerged from the walls at about six in the evening. By eight, Dolores was calling to her daughter. Elda, Elda. By 10, she was gone. Dolores continued her visitations for more than a month into September, scratching noises, doors opening and shutting, and the voice calling to her daughter and asking for prayers. The family called the local bishop, and large crowds gathered around the house to gossip and peek through the windows. That's when the local press, both the Heraldo and the Tribuna, sent reporters to record the Phenomenos Ultraterrenos, the unearthly phenomena. Dolores's paranormal visit came to an end with a clear message to Elda. You will join me, but only after you live a long and rich life. Elda recovered and left the Vargas family to live with an aunt and uncle, and all seemed to return to normal. Finally, months later, on Christmas Day, as Uncle Si's seven children sat facing each other in the hallway, each heard Dolores' whisper, May God bless you for the care you showed to my daughter. <laughs> 